I'm jumping right on into the good stuff today. And it's not going to be the typical WordPress tips that you hear around. No, we are getting down to the really good stuff and all the tips and tricks that I bet you, you have never heard of before. Go ahead and hit that like button if you are ready to hear some WordPress tips that are going to blow your mind. So this first WordPress tip is by far one of my favorite WordPress tips. And it's only something that I learned this year. So what I used to do is when I was creating my clients websites, I would create each page individually. So we'd come over here and I'd be like add new page and then I would create a home page, publish it. Then I would create an about page, then I would publish it. And then once I've published all the pages, I would come here and I would go to menus and I would then create a primary menu and I would add all those pages to it. But then I learned this simple trick. So what you're gonna do is you're going to come to appearance and then customize. And once the customizer loads, what we're going to do is we're going to create a primary menu. So we are going to come to menus here. So this menus tab, we're going to click on that. And then we're going to create a new menu. So we'll click on this button here and we're going to give our menu a name. So let's just call it new menu. And then we're going to click next. So once we've clicked next, we're going to add items to our menu. So we're going to click on this button here. And then we can either add pages that we've already created or we can create new pages. So let's say, for example, we create this, which is one, um, just say consulting, and then we're going to click add. And then we've got a new page, which is just called new page and then we'll click add and then another new page and we'll click add. Okay. So it adds those pages to my new menu. I'll click publish, Let's click publish again, and that has been published. And then we're gonna click the close button. And now when we go to pages, if I change that by date, I will see those new pages appear under pages. The next tip is a pretty simple tip, but it's just one of those that's going to give you confidence and make navigating around your WordPress dashboard a lot faster. So with the new Gutenberg editor, when you go into say, for example, a page or a post, if you click on edit, then what's going to happen is when it opens the Gutenberg editor, this section here on the left-hand side, so where it's got all the options like a page appearance and settings, etc., goes away. And it's kind of your full site editing. And it's quite good for distraction free editing, but it actually really annoys me because I can't navigate back to say, for example, posts or settings or appearance really quickly. I first have to click this button in order to get that back. So if you click on this button, you'll see that all these options come back up. So let's go back into edit. And what we're going to do is to make this not full size editing. So we're gonna to come to these three buttons here in the top right where it says options. And we're going to uncheck this full screen mode. And once we do that, you can see this left hand side menu comes back and then it makes navigating to whatever you want on the left hand side way easier. It's not like a two click process. Now this third tip you might think is a bit of a, a silly tip, but it's another one that makes navigating around your dashboard really quickly. So if you come to your WordPress dashboard and you have quite a lot of elements on the dashboard. So for example, I have quite a few and if I scroll right down to the bottom and have a review of whatever I have on the screen and I want to get back to the top, all I need to do is come to this black bar, click on the black bar, at the top and then it scrolls right up to the top. Now this also works on your pages. So if you come to your pages or your posts and you have a whole bunch of pages um, that you've created on your website, you can scroll right down to the bottom and then just click this black bar at the top and it will scroll right back to the top. This next tip is one that makes, again, navigating around WordPress a whole lot easier and makes it easy for you to find the pages that you would like to edit or the posts that you would like to edit. So when you're on your pages, you might notice that only 10 of the items that you have. So for example, here I have 11 pages, but only 10 are showing on this page 
page. And then if I want to see the 11th item, then I do need to click on this button and then it's going to navigate to the next page. And that's where it shows me the 11th item. And this can be quite annoying, especially if you have a lot of pages and then you have to flick through to find the page you'd like to actually edit. So what you can do is you can come to screen options in the top right here and you can change the number of items per page. So for example, I could change this to 20 and I could click apply. And when I click apply, you can see that navigation goes away, the pagination and all 11 items are now showing on this page. So this makes it easy for me to now just scroll down and edit my services page. Now you can do the exact same for your posts. So you can come to posts here and then you can come up to the top where it says screen options and then you can change the number per page here. Now, if you are using the WooCommerce plugin, you can do the same on your product pages. So I'm gonna show you here on another website. So I have products here. If I go to the top right hand corner, I click on screen options. I can change the number of items per page and then click apply. So it makes navigating around your posts, pages and your products a whole lot easier. This last tip is one of my favorite and something that I do for all my clients and on my own websites. So when you log into your website, you are presented with the WordPress dashboard. So this comes up with welcome to WordPress and it has a couple of boxes down below. Now there's some that come standard and there's some that are added when you install new plugins on your website. So for example, I have Optin Monster, I have AIO SEO, I also have WP Forms. So those are extra boxes that have been added. Now it looks a little bit messy and the great thing with the dashboard is it allows you to get kind of a snapshot of what's going on in your website. So this doesn't really give me a snapshot. So what's a good idea is to move things around a little bit and clean it up. So the first thing we can do is we can actually dismiss this welcome message because we don't need to see this every time we log into WordPress. So we'll click dismiss. Then we can actually move these boxes around so we can click on them and we can drag them to wherever we would like. So if I click and I drag all of these around, you can already see that I'm getting a much better snapshot of the website, but there are some things on this dashboard that I don't need. So I'm not going to be blogging, so I can take this quick draft away. I can also take this at a glance away and this activity. So I can do this by coming up here to screen options, and then I can just uncheck the boxes that I don't want to appear on my dashboard. So I don't want the at a glance, I don't want activity, I don't want quick draft, and I don't want the WordPress events and news. So there we go. So that looks a lot better. And then I can move things around. This is a setup. So we could probably remove that as well. And we can bring this over here. And this is your Google Analytics, your website analytics. So this is really great if you have an e-commerce store, you'll be able to see how many sales you've made that day or over the course of the month. It's also great for website analytics and seeing who is coming to your website and just getting a brief overview of exactly what is going on in your WordPress website. Now that you have my best WordPress tips, I wanna help you avoid some of the biggest mistakes I see See beginner WordPress users make. So in this video, I break down what you need to avoid and what you need to fix in order to have a solid professional WordPress website.